Prime Minister, I want you to know they've been sitting quietly like this the whole time. Well, no, well that's not quite true. I, I would like to say a, a very, very hearty welcome to a, a very good friend. Uh, Asotaro has been with us here at CSIS many times uh, in many roles. And uh, he comes now as the, as the finance minister uh, at a time that's of remarkable significance in Japan. Uh, everyone has heard about the so-called Abe economics. But there's no success to Abenomics without Aso action. I mean, it's going to require this man who is going to put in place the structure to bring around this transformation. This is a very, very big deal. And it's important for Japan, obviously. It's very important for the United States. And we all need to learn and listen carefully. Now, we were talking just as we were coming down about uh, this metaphor that uh, that the Prime Minister has used about arrows. I don't know if you saw the FT this morning. The, the Finance Minister talked about bazookas, okay? <laughs> now that grows very naturally having been a marksman and represented Japan at the Olympics as a, as a marksman. But he didn't use bazookas then, but he's using bazookas now, and it's a good thing for Japan. Would you please, with your applause, welcome Taro Aso. We're delighted to have him here with us today. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Hamlet. Thank, thank, thank you, Dr. Green, and thank you all for coming to join join me here. I am Taro Aso, and I will say this: I am back to. <laughs> <laughs> when you say that uh, each Japanese prime minister spends only in a, only a year in office, you are talking about me. When, when you say that in Japan, politics is like a revolving door, you are, you are talking about Shinzo Abe and me. Again, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> but you can see something not so bad here. You are now looking at an administration that has two former prime ministers and three former party presidents. You must envy us because you can't do anything like that under your presidential system. <laughs> Bill Clinton as a vice president of Obama, very difficult to imagine, I think. <laughs> now I will start off by touching upon our alliance. My view is that something is wrong when you say that the U.S. is always on the giving end and Japan always on the receiving end about the provision of security under our alliance. The Japanese must stand tall as an equal and responsible ally to the U.S. The Japanese must work hard as a guardian of international common goods, peace, prosperity, and democracy. In fact, that was my grandfather's, grandfather's aspiration. When Shigeru Yoshida signed the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty on September 8, 1951 in San Francisco, he hoped that one day Japan could work with the U.S. as an equal partner to sustain the liberal international order. 62 years later, that aspiration still holds. It is my belief that Japan has a noble responsibility to enhance peace, happiness, and democracy in the world. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, Japan must regain its economic power. That's why we are working hard to turn around our economy, pushing what you call abenomics. Make no mistake, we are pushing abenomics, 
not only for the sake of the economic growth. We are doing that precisely to make Japan your reliable ally and the responsible guardian of peace, prosperity, and democracy. That also applies to the TPP. In March, we said, we said that we, wa we would uh, be joined the TPP uh, negotiations. Last week, Tokyo and Washington reached an agreement about some of the issues we needed to solve in advance. Now, I am very much glad, glad that we are on the right track to enter the negotiation. Yes, the TPP is about the economic integration. But it is also much more than that. Remember that Japan is still the second biggest democratic economy in the world. <laughs> if bound together under the TPP, the American and the Japanese can make the world a much better place. The US and Japan bound together by the TPP can emerge as a mega stabilizer across the Pacific. Think about our combined sign, it is really mega. Once again, for the purpose as well, Japan must be stronger. Now I will spend the next couple of minutes to tell you about so-called abenomics. The logic is plain, simple, and straightforward. First, the Bank of Japan eases money. Second, the government comes in with fiscal policies stimulating real demand. And third, the government introduces a gross package including TPP, massive deregulation and other growth plans putting the growth on the sustainable orbit. That is it. That is what you call abenomics and its three arrows. Oh, by the way, Shinzo Abe-san was a actually player in his college days. To call abenomics, uh, the, uh, abenomics are a kind of combination of three arrows fits in most nicely. I was not an arch archery player. <laughs> I was a skeet shooter and represented Japan for the 1976 the Olympic in Montreal. So instead of arrows, I call them bazookas. <laughs> Anyhow, the yen has become cheaper as a result, but only as a byproduct. To say that cheap yen is our goal would grossly miss the point. The big D, deflation, is too much difficult and too much persistent to get rid of. We have to use every possible means. At the end of the day, a shrinking Japan could do only harm to the world. Only a growing Japan could do good for the people in Japan, for the people in America, and for the people in the world. That is what we are aiming to bring about. If you are still in doubt about what I say, it is probably because you have never gone through deflation, deflation, economic deflation. Let me tell you a bit about what it is like. It all started when the asset price bubble collapsed in the early 1990s. 
stock price index at the end of 1989 was about 800, uh, 389, I, sorry, sorry, I made a mistake, 30, about 39,000 yen. It fell down to as low as 7,000 yen. The land price in major cities hit its peak in 1991. It became lower by 87 percent. 100 yen to 13 yen, it means. As a result, many banks had negative equity. Many companies also had negative equity. Banks were interested only in reducing their balance sheet. Companies were interested only in paying back their debt, their debt, rather than investing in new ideas or products for future growth. They choose to minimize the cost, cutting wages and so on. Unions, labor unions, unions wanted no layoff, so they chose to accept the pay cut. Gradually, money gained value relative to goods, growth slowed because no one except for the government was willing to invest. Vicious, uh, vicious circle uh, took root, deflation hence became very persistent. I must tell you, deflation is like slow motion deaths by losing temperature. It is early stage, it does not feel so painful. Your wage may not grow, but CPI, consumption price, is also flat. So your purchasing power does not decline that much. It is already too late when you have finally become aware that you are a hostage and that you cannot escape the vicious cycle. Because it is a slow process, deflation could ring no alarm bell, unlike inflation. That's why deflation is much more harmful. So what ought to be done? Why Abenomics necessary? Before the December general election, we thought that the most important thing would be to get a little of deflation mindset of Japanese at the outset of Abenomics. We thought that the economic landscape should be redrawn dramatically so that people can get willing to take risks. It was at that time the idea of three arrows or three bazookas shot in a fell swoop occurred to us. We made it our campaign platform and pushed it hard during the campaign. And the result was we won the landslide victory. At long last, voters gave us mandate, political capital, strong enough to do bold things that were a long time coming. We had done nothing then other than just voicing our policy package and our will to do it. Interestingly, the market started to respond. Tokyo stock English started to rise. It, is, uh, it speaks volumes about how important it is to change people's perceptions, outlook, and mindset. It is true that Japan is only a country 
that has gone through deflation. None of the nation had a deflation recession after the Second World War ended. That is about the post-war history. If you see pre-war examples, I must mention that Japan is among the few countries that have succeeded in containing deflation. John Maynard King published his general theory in 1936. Prior to that, there was someone in Japan who did Keynesian policy in the early 1930s. His name is Korehiko Takahashi, who was six times finance minister and one time prime minister in the early 20, uh, early 20, early 1920, early 1930s, sorry. Takashi saved Japan by doing exactly what we are doing now. His bold monetary easing and fiscal spending stopped the deflationary spiral. Like us today, he also did it big and fast, or shock and awe. So much so, if the uh, Franklin Roosevelt would say later that Takashi had given him inspiration. It encouraged me to think that among our predecessor, there was someone who made it. We wish to follow his footsteps. Now back to the real genesis of our Benamics. It started when Mr. Sas uh, sa, 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 Masaki, 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 Masaki Shirakawa, then head, head, of, head of the BOJ, Bank of Japan, and I, mm, I, uh, I, what, I issued a joint uh, statement for the first time in Japan's monetary history, January this year, so-called joint statement with BOJ. In that joint statement, the BOJ essentially introduced the inflation target of 2%. We call it price stability target. On our part, the government pledged to run the kind of uh, macroeconomics and fiscal policies that are flexible and responsive. It was also written that the government should encourage the competition, enhance Japan's growth potentials, and establish sustainable fiscal structure. What we did thereafter, or what we will do from now on, is all based on this joint statement. Anyhow, the first bazookas is bold monetary policy. I will not say more about it. You may just want to open your newspaper or magazine. They are now telling a, a lot about uh, so-called, well, Kuroda no mix. Haruhiko Kuroda, the new governor of the Bank of Japan, really did it big and fast, or shock and awe. We are all glad, first of all, he showed guts. Second of all, he is good communicator. And third, he is well connected with and respected by the member of the central banking community. Now, let me go on to tell you more about the second bazooka. That is a fiscal policy I am looking after. Please note, at this point, that we are not making a big government. American conservatives does not apply to the Japanese situation. Here in the US, conservatism is about small government and tax reduction. 
The situation in Japan is more complex. When the private sector cannot spend and only save under deflation, the government must be the spender of the last resort. Thinking that way, we put forth a large scale supplementary budget for the fiscal year of 2012. Public works are also important. Not only important, they are vital. Unless we spend more and do it now on the bridge, road, and tunnels that are all more than 50 years old, at any given time, they may fall apart. I know in the state you have exactly the same problem in 1980s. I would also like you to remember what people said about Golden Gate Bridge or Fuba Dam and so on. When constructed in 1930s, during the Roosevelt period, many people called them as simply lavish and extravagant. However, more than 70 years after its creation, Fuba Dam continues to draw more than a million visitors a year. Without that dam, Las Vegas would have been, uh, how shall I, a very different place, I say. I say. Without Golden Gate Bridge, the tourist, or a tourist economy in San Francisco would have been a much smaller, I'm sure. So we are investing into our future generation when we do public works. That is my defini definition for public works. I also believe that our tax policy should play a bigger role. In Japan, interest rate and land prices are still extremely low. And yet, the companies don't invest. Their capital investment remains below their depreciation, depreciation cost, again as a result of deflation. So my ministry introduced a new arrangement. Under that new arrangement, if you buy a new machine and equipment for your domestic business expansion, you can get tax deduction or special depreciation. If you invest more in research and development, you can also get your tax reduced. Furthermore, if you hire more or pay more to your employees, you can get a tax benefit as well. Please also note that we do what we do in order to generate domestic demand, not to increase our export. Japanese economy exports only 11 to 13 percent of the uh, GDP. The number is bigger than that of for the U.S. or Brazil, maybe, but smaller than all the rest. Is the, uh, there are 192 nations in all over the world. We are the on, on, we are number three nation. From, from below. Lower than Japan is US and Brazil, I think. The German and maybe 40% of its GDP out of export, while China about 25% for instance. There is another power we can use to invite more growth. That is the power of suasion. Here, Shinzo Abe and I are lucky as a boss of us uh, ex-Prime Ministers. He and I have met a whole bunch of CEOs and requested that they should remember their patriotism and hire more or pay more to their employees. 
it is working. For the first time in many years, an increasing, num increasing number of companies are willing to pay more. However, getting rid of deflation mindset alone cannot warrant long-lasting recovery. We must lead people's expectation to sustainable economic growth. And for the purpose, we must address two downside risks. One, inflation without growth. Two, interest rate hike without growth. Let me address them one by one. Let's assume that you now have rising CPI, but you have no pay rise because your economy is not growing. That's a bad inflation. People should suffer then. It is right here the third bazooka should come into play. The third bazooka, if you recall, is a package of growth enhancement policies. I know that is hard to come by. I'm not saying we can grow very easily. Still, it takes us only to look into mirror to see who we are. Then you realize you can do more. I know I sound like an optimist. I even believe that to lead your nation, you had better be an optimist rather than cynic or pessimist. One thing in common between Shinzo Abe and I is both of us are true believers in Japan and tapped resources. In that regard, call us an opt optimistic duo. See, for example, what Japan can offer. High-speed train, bullet train. The bullet train between Tokyo and Osaka runs with average delay time of 30 seconds, not a minute. <laughs> but si uh, since it's uh, launched in 1964, the service has caused absolutely no human injury, not to mention uh, fighter, fighter accident. They're actually offering you magnetic levitation technology, which could connect New York and Washington, D.C. in 40 minutes. Not 40 seconds, 40 minutes. <laughs> Next, good for products. In my part of the world, from Singapore, Hong Kong, Guangdong, China, Japanese rice, Japanese apple, or Japanese sake and spirits are on high demand. I have said all the time to the farmer in Japan that they can make another Toyota a giant export industry. Also, content industry, manga, <laughs> I hope you know this is a this manga has become a French now, you know. <laughs> Not English, French. Manga and animation, pop music and so on. Some of you, some of, some of you may recall that as a foreign minister, I introduced manga award to, the, to be given to non-Japanese manga creators. Furthermore, some of the small companies in Japan are amazing. My favorite one, Okano in Tokyo, boasts a total monopoly in the market of injection needles. Why it is only company that produces injection needles as sharp as the mouse of mosquito. In other words, you don't feel any pain. 
How many employees are there? Only six, including the president and his wife. <laughs> Amazing. Few other countries have such unknown, yet world-class craftsman company, companies. Only in Japan, you have family businesses whose roots date back to thousand years ago. So the real challenge for government is this, to let go. We should simply let the companies shine themselves. That must be at the cost of our third bazooka. For further details, bear with me a couple of months more. We have set up an expert group. They will give, a, give us their proposal about the deregulation, innovation, and other growth strategies. I am looking forward to the proposals. They are likely to be bold, something that could dramatically change the problems that were at the root of deflation. In sum, to prevent bad inflation from taking shape, pursuit of growth policies is most important. What about the bad interest rate like hike, which is the second downside risk? It is evident that if we pursue only bold monetary easing without putting our fiscal house in order, we would lose your confidence and trust. After all, in Japan, gross government debt exceeds 200% relative to GDP. Unless we pursue fiscal prudence very much hard, there may be a sudden rise in the interest rate. No one will benefit from that, needless to say. However, you should not be overly anxious. The truth is, there are only a handful of countries that can fund their entire government debt in their own currencies. Most of the countries must issue bonds denominated in currencies other than their own. Japan can finance its debt by issuing bonds in its own currency. Other such countries include Britain, Switzerland, and of course the US, United States of America. Only four countries in the whole world, I think. For them, what is most important is first of all to lay out a credible roadmap for reducing the debt and second of all to stick to the roadmap and win confidence from the market. In that regard, I am proud of the government <coughs> agreement. Both ruling and opposition parties achieved last year. The agreement has become a bill. The bill enabled the government to raise the, uh, to raise the rate of the consumption tax from 5% to 8 and then 8 to 10%. The first increase should, be, uh, should take place in a year from now and the second in October the 2015. Now, no, no, sorry, no, <clears throat> no one wants to see tax rate becoming higher. Tax hike is the most unpopular thing to do for the politicians. I think it is the maturity of Japanese democracy that has made it possible for the parliament, parliament, parliament to pass that bill and I am proud of it. What's also remembering here is the fact that Governor Kuroda's massive easing was made a possible 
on one condition. The government must pursue the fiscal prudence really hard. That is what we promised in the joint statement I mentioned earlier. Within the next two years, the BOJ will buy a huge amount of government bond in a scale unthinkable so far. The market must become more nervous to see whether or not the government is committed, is improving its fiscal situation. So far, the fiscal prudence is not a task for the future. It is a clear and present one that we ought to start tackling now rather than later. I am determined to facilitate the economic environment and raise the consumption tax rate as scheduled based on the provision on the Comprehensive Tax Reform Act. We must also address Japan's own entitlement reform to put the growth of the government expenditure in check. Previously at the Toronto G20 meetings, Japan pledged fiscal consolidation. Together with other member nations, we stick to it. We aim at halving the primary balance deficit ratio to GDP by fiscal year 2015 from there in 2010. We also aim at, aim at achieving primary balance surplus by 2020. We are going to publish medium-term fiscal consolidation plan around the middle of, middle of this year. The second downside risk of interest rate hike is avoidable. Abenomics should take a deep root again in order for the economy to seek the sustainable growth. Finally, before, the, before conclusion, let me say only a few words about what kind of country Japan ought to be. Japan must be a place where reward meets effort. Japan must be a place where risk takers can be given opportunities, not just once, but many times. Both of ex-Prime Minister represent that there is a chance for second coming in Japan. <laughs> Japan must be a place where animal spirit, in the sense of John Maynard Kane used, invites successes. Japan must be a place for innovation. Japan is now on cutting the edge of new medical technologies. To cite what Shinya Yamanaka Nobel Prize winner said, Japan is a country that is the closest to bringing the stem cell technology to the bedside. That is about it, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we are doing all that, not only for the sake of the Japanese, but also to make our alliance stronger. At the end of the day, the US is the biggest democratic economy, and Japan still the second. Together, we could do a lot. For us, the sky is the limit. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much. Thank you, I'm Michael Green from CSIS, and we're now going to take some, some questions. Um, 25 years ago, about this month, I went to work in the Japanese diet, and my then boss asked a young rising star named Aso Taro to make sure I didn't get in any trouble. Um, he failed, 
but uh, I, was, uh, I was correctly informed that he was a rising star, um, and I was not told he would be Japan's Takahashi Kyorekyo, let alone a skeet shooting, bazooka wielding uh, Takahashi Kyorekyo. <laughs> But it's a good thing for Japan uh, and for the world economy, he's on the job. Let me ask the first question uh, uh, about the third bazooka. I know you're waiting a few months. Is something happening in Japan in July? I, <laughs> uh, I, I know you're probably waiting until after the election and also gathering the, the views of experts. But could you say uh, more about your personal philosophy or principles um, that would guide the third bazooka, long-term uh, growth strategy. Uh, Prime Minister also mentioned women's empowerment when he was here, which could add considerable sustained uh, economic growth, um, or deregulation or other things. What are some of the principles that you think about for that third bazooka? ま、well, regarding the uh, third bazooka, uh, perhaps uh, this uh, question might be better addressed to someone else than myself. I hope you can wait for another few months and uh, uh, hear directly from the uh, people who are uh, responsible for uh, building uh, the ideas uh, right now, and uh, you will be able to get the most accurate answer from them. But as far as I know, allow me to also try to answer the question.実に手の方が勝手に動くっていうロボットはもうすでに開発されています、日本で。これをいわゆる介護用ロボットとしてこれを使おうとしたときには残念ながら日本の厚生省というところにはロボットの開発するにあたっての制度が全くありませんので。薬の開発制度そのままロボットに当てはめておるため臨床実験を何百回とやらされるためにもうその頃はそのロボットは古くなるこれが今の実態ですからこれに合わせて全く新しいシステムを作ろうとしています一つの例です well, 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 at this moment, a large number of people are coming up with a wonderful ideas in large number. And uh, it is mainly has to do with uh, deregulation or regulatory reform. Particularly, let me focus on the medical care area uh, for the moment. For example, in Japan, uh, there is already a production going on for producing nursing care robots. Because we already have the technology which enable people to just think something in their mindset, then it would uh, uh, drive the robot's arm in whatever uh, direction that we would like to see them move. So already that type of uh, technology has been developed in Japan. So idea is to apply this fully to the use for the uh, nursing care robots. But unfortunately, at this moment, we have a ministry called MAGLW, Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare, uh, who knows nothing about the robot development the system. Of course, they are good at uh, developing uh, drugs and pharmaceuticals, so what they are trying to do is to just apply directly the pharmaceutical-oriented uh, uh, development system to the development of the nursing care robots. So many times over clinical trial and clinical experiments that have to be uh, performed so that by the time approval is given, the said robot uh, will become uh, highly outdated. So this is not the way to go. So we are going to uh, introduce a new system to overcome this type of issue, for example. This robot is one of the things that we have to do. For example, in Japan, 
日本ではかかって内務省以外では内務省で自治庁以外ではこの水道を扱うことはできませんしかし水道の料金を回収する 99.99% というようなシステムを持っている国は日本の水道会社以外でありませんけれどもこの水道は全て国営もしくは市営町営でできていてこういったものを全て民営化しますいわゆる学校を作って運営は民間民営化する公設民営そういったものも一つの考え方にあがアイディアとして上がってきてきつつあります。A robot here is just one a mere example, and another example can be found in the water supply system.、Uh, I think、uh, in the world, countries、uh, apart from Japan are、uh, having the、uh, private companies to run those、uh, systems. But in Japan, the whole purview、uh, belongs to the MIC, Ministry of、uh, Information and uh, uh, Internal Affairs and Communication. That is their exclusive、uh, area that、uh, they wield influences on. But、uh, Japan is、uh, a country which is known for being successful. For in、uh, recovering 99.99% of the water charges. So almost most of them is a revenue、uh, water as opposed to non revenue water. And、uh, those systems are run by either the state or the municipalities. So we hope that、uh, we can privatize these areas as well. It's just like a schooling facility. The pri public sector can construct、uh, the uh, structures like schools, but、uh, we can let the private sector to run the facility. Thank you. Matthew? We have microphones, and, and, and Matthew will set an example by identifying himself. <laughs>、uh, I'm Matthew Goodman here at CSIS.、Uh, thank you, Mr. Minister, for those compelling remarks.、Um, I, want, I have a question about the first arrow, or bazooka, but first I want to comment on your answer to Mike's question、um, because I think it was very helpful that you're specific in your answer to the question about the growth strategy, and, and I appreciate that. Um, you like manga, and、um, if I may cite the most famous American manga, Peanuts,、uh, there is a regular installment in Peanuts in which Charlie Brown faces his friend Lucy, and she's holding a football and encouraging him to come down and kick the football. And he wants to kick the football, but he doubts that she will hold it. She, he thinks she will take it away because every year she takes it away, and he lies on his back, he en ends up on his back, flat on his back. And so I think a lot of us in Washington are like Charlie Brown. We want to believe, but there,、um, there uh, have been experiences in the past where the growth strategy has not been specific or has not been carried through. And so I think everyone is looking forward very much to this growth strategy and to the specific elements、um, that, that are credible and that, that get carried through on. So that's my comment. The question is about the first arrow. Can you give us a little bit more flavor of the discussion today in the G20 about? Uh, monetary stimulus, not just in Japan, but in other uh, um, advanced economies, and the impact of that on global markets, and whether there was、uh, significant concern about that issue and any agreement to,、uh, to address、uh, monetary stimulus. This problem is that the G20, 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 しかも日本の国債の金利は 0.5% です。5% じゃありませんよ。0.5% だもんですから、このお金を借りた人たちがどっと新興国家にその金が流れ込むということに関する恐怖感というのが新興国にはあります。それに関してどういう反応が出たかというのが今ご質問の背景だと思います。Well,、uh, with regard to this issue, in fact, yesterday and today, G20 meetings have been held to which、uh, the finance ministers as well as central bank governors have attended. 
And the previous one was held in Moscow uh, in February, and the second one, uh, second one of which has been uh, held just now in uh, Washington. And as uh, was asked uh, in the question, uh, of course, uh, everyone wanted to know about the impact of the monetary easing policy of, for the uh, banks in Japan, because uh, right now the interest rate on the JGB is so low. Uh, it's at 0.5 percent, not 5 percent, but 0.5 percent. So people are worried that uh, uh, it might uh, uh, induce a situation whereby a massive uh, flow of the uh, funds might end up in the uh, emerging market economy. ワレワレとしては今回のこの3本の矢というものは基本的に日本がディフレーションによる不況からの脱却これが我々にとってのターゲットプライオリティナンバーワンであって円が安くなるというのは単なる倍プロダクトみたいなものなんだということを説明をし
しかし結果としてその増税が人々の消費を下げ結果として日本は景気が悪くなり法人税所得税消費税この3つを足したトータルは41兆円だった1997年から翌年には37兆円に減りました5兆円増えるはずが4兆円減ったそれが我々の歴史ですから今言われた意味は我々も十分に注意しています。Well, back in 1997, when the consumption tax rate was raised from the 3% to 5%,、uh, we initially thought that、uh, by doing this,、uh, we will receive the increasing in the、uh, tax revenue by 5 trillion yen.、Uh, however, Uh, it turned out to be that as a result of the tax increase, it had dampened the consumption by individuals, and as a result of that, the economy had gotten worse. So it、uh, used to be、uh, back in 1997 that the total tax revenue、uh, raised from the corporate tax, income tax, and consumption tax was 41 trillion yen.、Uh, but the,、uh, in the following year, it、uh, was reduced down to 37 trillion yen. So we hope that、uh, it would add on another 5 trillion yen to our tax revenue. したがって、われわれは昨年、当時の与党だった民主党と自民党と公明党3党で、この消費税の値上げ法案をサインするときに、条件をつけて、第18条,条項っていうのをつけて、まあ、いろいろ難しいことは書いてありますが、簡単なことを言えば、景気が良くない限りは上げないということを、今年の10月までに決める、今年の10月までにいい結果が出ていなければ、来年の4月から上げるということは伸ばすということが書いてあります。一応、そういったことを考えながら今やっているというのが現状で、今の状況で、たった今、その結論を出せと言ったら今この3月の段階では上げられる段階ではありませんもうしばらく景気が良くなってくるということを見た上で判断を出したいと思っています。And、uh, last year,、uh, then the、uh, ruling party、uh, DPJ, as well as、uh, LDP and the k o m e i、uh, w a s able to strike an agreement, have signed the agreement.、Uh, and uh, there was a number 18th、uh, provision、uh, included in that document. And、uh, uh, put it simply,、uh, what it meant was that we have to see, first of all, the pickup in the economy.、Uh, otherwise, no raise in the consumption tax、uh, would take place. And whether to do it or not will be decided. By、uh, coming October. So, by October, if we end up having a、uh, picked up economy, then uh, uh, we can、uh, raise the tax. Uh, but uh, uh, if we, it doesn't work out that well, then the、uh, timing of the raising of the、uh, said tax will be deferred to a later date.、Uh, so, as shown in these k i n d of uh, responses, uh, we have been seriously considering uh, the uh, implications of the、uh, tax increase. So,、uh, if you ask me、uh, if we can、uh, make a decision right now to say definitely that、uh, taxation、uh, will be raised at this stage of March, we cannot say that definitely. We have to allow some more time to make sure that、uh, economy. はい。Beef and milk, and how these domestic political pressures will influence the negotiations going forward. Now, I'm going to say that the food is a very important thing. I'm going to say that the food is a very important thing. I'm going to say that the food is a very i m p o r t a 例えばアメリカはサトウキビで 
100% の自由化をした場合は南部のサトウキビ業者は多分全滅しますあメキシコにメキシコがありますから。I know that、uh, TPP initially started with an idea that、uh, all the、uh, tariff has to be eliminated、uh, entirely. But、uh, for example, in the case of the United States,、uh, look at sugarcane.、Uh, if it is、uh, liberalized 100%, then the sugarcane producers in the southern part of the United States will go down completely、uh, due to Mexico. オーストラリアの OG ビーフに乾杯しますからアメリカからカウボーイがなくなる<笑>それはやっぱ考えられんでしょうと思います、uh, Likewise look at the beef、uh, If beef is、uh, liberalized 100% then OG beef will take over for sure So there is going to be no more cowboys left in the United States That situation is totally utterly inconceivable したが,したがってあのどの国でもあのセンシティブなイシューっていうのがあるんで今日本アメリカは日本に対して自動車に関しては日本は今関税はゼロですけれどもアメリカはトラックは 25% 自動車は 2.5% の関税がかかっていますけれどもこれはこのまま残してもらいたいっていう条件にはついています。And I know that、uh, any country h a v e a sensitive issue to themselves.、Uh, for example, United States have been requesting Japan to do something about the automotive、uh, area because、uh, already Japanese、uh, tariff on the automobile is zero. But United States would like to maintain the 25% tariff rate on the trucks and 2.5% on the passenger cars. And、uh, this is a condition that the US has asked us to keep. どの品目をどれくらいにするかは今から交渉次第でしょうけれども我々としてはそういったものに対してサブシダイズするか補助金を出すかまた日本の農業の指導として今例えば日本のイチゴなんていうものが我々見してみりゃ普通のイチゴですけれどもこの同じイチゴが一粒一粒ですよ一粒300円とか350円で上海とかアラ,あア,ラブアラブの国々でこれが売れている日本じゃ一箱300円でも、うん、と思いますけどここは一粒300円で売れるそういう農家はものすごく利益を出していますし。そういう意味ではあの農産物によっていろいろなものがあるんだと思いますので今どういうものがコンペティ、えー、何競争力を維持するまたお米に関しても幸いにしてお米は地球が温暖化したおかげで北海道のお米は昔は厄介堂前あこんな訳さなくて<笑>訳さなくてあの北,海道北海道の米はまずいお米の代表だったんですけれども今は北海道のお米,もお米は去年一昨年と金賞を取りましたやっぱり取っただそれは何を意味するかっていうと北海道の農家の平均の耕している田んぼの広さは内地九州とか四国とか内地の農家に比べて面積が20倍から25倍あるしたがってそこらのところで作られているお米は十分に競争力があるということになってますんで多分お米っていうようなものはむしろ北にどんどんどんどん移動してって南の方が農作物の内容が果物とかいちごとか。そういったものに変わっていく多分そういった流れになるんじゃないかなと思います僕はその農業にそんな詳しいわけじゃないけど流れとして私のうちの周りを見てれば大体私南の方に住んでますんでそういったような感じになりつつあるなと思っています
Uh, likewise, in regards to agricultural products offered by Japan, uh, of course, uh, from now on, we have to decide which tariffs should be imposed on which item in the agriculture. It is all up to the negotiation to be held from now on. So we might decide eventually that uh, some items uh, would qualify for subsidy and so forth. Uh, but uh, there is a positive side to the agriculture as well. For example, look at the strawberries that are produced by Japan. Uh, to us, it's just an ordinary strawberries, but uh, one piece of a strawberry can claim a price of 300 or 350 yen a piece in Shanghai or countries in the Arab area. Uh, for us, uh, uh, we hesitate if we look at one package or packet of strawberry is sold at 300 yen, for example, but uh, if the uh, selling the place is different, then uh, you can command uh, a spectacularly high price. Uh, so uh, one uh, just a piece of a strawberry will be enjoyed much more uh, in some of the countries uh, in the world. So in this way, uh, farmers will have a way to make a profit out of the products that they make. So I think it all depends on what agricultural products or item you are talking about. There are certain areas that definitely a competitiveness can be raised and uh, maintained. And fortunately, uh, in case of rice as well, Thanks to the global warming, the Hokkaido, which is the northernmost island in Japan, is now enjoying the benefit as a result of it, as a result of uh, uh, able to uh, grow a much more tasty rice. Uh, in the past, uh, Hokkaido uh, produced rice was known for uh, most uh, undelicious uh, kinds of uh, rice, uh, no good uh, uh, reputation at all. But uh, the, uh, last year, as well as the, uh, one year before that, Hokkaido produced uh, rice has been given golden prize uh, for the excellence uh, uh, in their products uh, consecutively. Uh, why? Because in Hokkaido, uh, you can have a, uh, on average, a much bigger uh, paddy, right? paddy field to uh, raise uh, rice, uh, unlike Kyushu or the Shikoku, uh, for example. Uh, their uh, cultivation area is uh, 20 or 25 so larger, 25 times larger uh, than elsewhere. So in this way, even rice could uh, claim a much more high uh, competitiveness. And uh, right now, because of this uh, climate change and so forth, uh, rice production area is really shifting toward northward much more. Uh, so I think the areas in the south uh, will be shifting their crops to much more in the uh, fruits area, like. Uh, uh, strawberries, for uh, example. So this is a, a flow that I see. Uh, I'm not an expert on the agriculture, but uh, uh, since I live in the southern part of Japan, and when I look around the areas uh, uh, around my residence, I could tell that the changes are occurring. Minister, thank you for a comprehensive, um, concrete, and candid presentation. Um, we would appreciate it if you could give the minister and his delegation a, mo a chance to get to the airport and get on to their next Appointment will have copies of the speech available out front and also on our website. Uh, but first, let's conclude. Uh, please join me in expressing our appreciation.